then I'll, I'll so I've just been uh, wiring up or attaching some wires to these new LED rings so I've got a bunch of short wires stripped and tinned the ends I've also tinned the uh, commons on each of these LEDs I've got some heat shrink to go over it when we're done so now it's just a case of uh, soldering these in place just get a bit of solder on the tip and then because I've already tinned these LED legs these attach very easily so that's them all done and uh, shrunk down and now what I do uh, I've been doing on each of these uh, sets of rings is that I've been marking the, the cables so I know which uh, at least which ring these belong to I've just been using a black marker and putting a series of stripes on it So now I know that those belong to this uh, ring. Here's one of the other ones that's been done. As you can see, we've got four. That's the next one. And we've got this one that's wired up. We've got three. And on this one, I haven't, I've done two, 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 and then the single one is for the tip of these three that are just parallel together. The reason for identifying these rather than leaving them random will become clear whenever we come to actually mounting this on uh, and then wiring it up uh, to the rest of the tower uh, so that these hopefully will form a nice pattern rather than being completely random. So now I've got to get a bit of the fibre rod that goes up in between uh, all of these and uh, mount these to that. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got quite the bird's nest. It looks a complete nightmare, doesn't it? But I assure you, and partially I assure myself, it will look fine in the end. And there's a reason for kind of doing it this way. So I have got my fibre rod and I have glued it into just the top ring. Uh, just to get it fixed to one of them. At the other end I've just put a clothes peg on it. That's just to stop these sliding off. These are free to go. And as you may be able to see if I tip it up like this I've got two uh, tin copper wires going down through uh, the holes that are surrounding the central hole. I have three little holes surrounding the central one. Uh, they are for carrying the, the common red, all the common blues and all the common greens uh, sections of the, the LEDs. So as you see I've threaded two of them through. I've also put uh, little lengths of heat shrink I will shrink these down but I'll probably take them out to my workshop and do it with my heat gun. It's just a lot easier when you've got a lot in a sort of 
compact space. And so I've brought them up and I've soldered them on first of all up at the, the top here uh, to this outer ring. I think that's the red segment. And then this second one is to the, the middle. Uh, I say the middle, there's four pins, but one of them's the common cathode. So the middle, uh, which is the green, and then I'm just about to thread up the blue. So I thought I'd turn back, turn the camera back on and uh, let you laugh at me trying to do this. Now you could go up if you wanted, uh, as I'm going to do, or you can thread it down a ways, just whichever you want. Uh, it's entirely up to yourself. So it is a bit bird nesty and we will get things sorted out a bit uh, more tidy. But unfortunately we have to go through this phase of kind of getting all the wires in place before we can begin to tidy up. And once we're through we can tin as you can see I've got my gloves on that so, because we're doing a bit of work with the super glue and I'd rather stick the glue to the gloves than stick my fingers to whatever it is that I'm gluing. Let me just find which is the innermost leg of the these LEDs and it's this one. Holding iron to it, and I just shrink down just the end. It just fits a little bit better. So essentially, this top section is wired. So what I can do is I can feed these wires down. There's one. That's it shrinkers come a bit loose. Let's just get that sorted out before we go any further. This comes about ha not having the, the right diameter of heat shrink for these very very fine wires. So now what we need to do we just need to uh, put little jumper wires basically through uh, onto these common red, green and blue anode feeds. And I'll probably have to use the, the insulated wire because I will be coming probably under these little rings uh, of LED leads to get to the right one. So let me just get some cable. This one, as you can see, is attached to the outermost pin of the LED. This is why putting all the LEDs in the same orientation in all of the rings makes such a difference. So yeah, you can see this one. through which is uh, this one so I can attach uh, a wire to that and solder it on and then bring it through and solder it on to here which is the outermost uh, part of that an octopus to do this. Yeah. 
And it doesn't matter that uh, I've effectively soldered that part way down because the uh, rear bridge on the heat shrink is big enough that it can cover over that to whatever length is needed. So I can cut that off to there. Of course the reason why you do this all before you glue anything in place is that the act of gluing and then soldering tends to heat the glue up which gives off awful fumes absolutely awful fumes which I don't think are very good for you So it's just basically doing that for, uh, that was the red, and then we've got the green over in here, and then the blue on the innermost ring. And it's just a case of doing that on each of the rings. And once they're all done, then we can uh, then glue things in place. So we've got all of the wires soldered in place, all except for common red, the common green, and the common blue. Uh, I'm leaving those off for the moment so they don't get confused because they're all going to be white coloured wires. I'll put those on once we've glued this in place. Now what I did was, as you can see here, I used some heat shrink uh, to be able to cover over the bare copper wire that I used to go between each of the layers which connect the common red, green and blue uh, anodes. So uh, these are sort of common throughout all of them and then they come out underneath. Just can focus on that. Rather a lot of wires. But they come out and then just connect to the common uh, sort of circles of, of tracks, so to speak, that I've uh, put on here. And then I'll just, when it's glued in place on top of the tower, I'll then uh, solder on wire, individual wires for each of these. So, next up is just to take some super glue and just put a drop of super glue down just into this sort of area just to, to firm this up a bit, these are a little bit wobbly, the top two aren't too bad but then the bottom two are, are just a bit, a bit wobbly so the glue hopefully will sort that out. With using the heat shrink to space out uh, it made it easy to get a relatively even spacing. They're not perfect, but uh, they'll have to do. Well, and as before, like with the tower, we will come back uh, once this is all in place and uh, once the glue is set and use some zip ties just to tidy up this wiring and make it into one neat sort of column of, of wiring rather than this bird's nest. So we just got to wait for that uh, glue uh, to harden and go off. And in the meantime, I'll just uh, remove the other tower uh, tip uh, from off that and uh, prepare that in readiness for gluing this whole section in 